think. And uh, actually, we should be um, should be on air here, which is pretty amazing, um, since uh, everything messed up completely for me. Um, basically, because I messed things up. Um, the thing is that I have a brand new mixer here. And uh, there are at least two buttons on that. <laughs> and, and those buttons are too, too, too many. <laughs> so, so whatever I did, one of them was like criti critical you know, for the incoming audio from the Hangout to me. And that, that was basically the deal. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, perhaps, perhaps um, this thing works out roughly, at least, uh, depending on how many ghosts are in my system here. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if everything just crashed and burned. But anyway, this is um, Be Smart on Air, which is a really bad joke. <laughs> really bad joke. Um, but... Uh, Oh man, I sh should have this lower third here. Do I? Yes, I do. Yep. Anyways, um, uh, I kind of figured that um, I might try this crazy call in function at the same time while talking to Lindy. Uh, Hockenberry, did I massacre that? No, nope, that's right, Hockenberry. Okay, cool. Yeah. From the other side of the pond, that is U.S. And um, it might have worked. Everything might have worked if um, if I had done the right thing. But <laughs> hey, you learn. Uh, every every one of these, every single one of these, is a learning experience. Uh, especially if you have you know like things attached to your system, like stuff with buttons and, and whatnot, like mixers. Uh, I should never gone that route, I believe. Uh, all right, I'm Nilo from the uh, very northern Sweden. This is, darn, be smart on air. Yeah, that's what it's called, for better or worse. And, and um, Lindy from the other side of the pond there, you have been, if I got it right, quite heavily involved in some educational cloud services. Um, would you please uh, give us a little bit of a presentation uh, who you are and what you're doing? And then a uh, couple of words from Kim as well, I hope, if I don't uh, block him or mute him or something. And um, <laughs> then we might dig a little bit deeper into the cloud offerings from these tech giants. What do you say about that? Sure, sounds good. Um, so yeah, I'm Lindy Hockenberry. I'm based in Bozeman, Montana in the US. So we're in the Northwest kind of bordering Canada up in the North. So we're the North of the US. <laughs> um, I'm a teacher. I taught grade seven through 12 and then just kind of ended up rolling into more of a curriculum development and professional development roles and worked as a technology integration specialist. And now I work more in a, I work still as a technology integration specialist, but more in a consultant role. So I contract out with schools and different organizations and provide trainings and do webinars. And I am a Google certified educator and trainer. So I do a lot in the Google realm. I'm also a Microsoft innovative educator master trainer. I say that's such a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> I do a lot in the Microsoft realm in the Office 365 for education. So um, I kind of, am, and I have other things I do as well, but I'm pretty fluent in both the Google, the G Suite, I should say now, G Suite for Education and Office 365 for Education. All right. I, I still have a hard time saying G Suite. What about I you? Every time I, it, I still am struggling with it, but we'll get there. <laughs> it, it kind of, I, I can't help it. It kind of sounds like a joke to me still, you know. <laughs> Was it really such a good idea to change the name from yeah. Google Apps for Education to G Suite? I, I, I'm not. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> <laughs> we will find out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I had this great, like, episode title. Oh, G, no fruit? Question um, mark. And I mean, 
Office 365, that's the, the obvious, the Microsoft offering here, G Suite from, from Google. And uh, perhaps we might even get into what the, uh, the fruit company is doing. Uh, Apple is huge, um, and they are doing pretty amazing work in, in whatever they try. But these days in education uh, makes me wonder a bit. Uh, still about you, Lindy. Uh, if we go back in time even more, how did you get into education? Yeah, well, I went. I graduated with an education degree, and I taught grades seven through twelve in the U.S. So that would be trying to transfer to Europe. You guys go more by years, so right. probably about the same, like years mm -hmm. seven through twelve around there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so that's how I got started, classroom teacher. Was it like uh, something that was uh, obvious from you know from early age or what? No, that you'd, you'd become a teacher. It wasn't. I wasn't one of those kids that knew my entire life what I wanted to be. In fact, I really I love animals. Oh, there are there such kids, by the way? Yeah. Oh, I have some. Like my best friend from high school always knew she okay. wanted to be a nurse, like from the time of right. sixth grade. And she is. She's in FMP school right now, actually. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, no, I was not one of those kids. It took me a while. It took me a couple years of college to really figure it out. So yeah, but happy with my choice. Ended up here. And uh, these days, did I get it right? Uh, is it like that you are running your, your own business 100%? Yeah, so I have my own consulting business in tech graded professional development. So I do um, work a, a lot around Montana, the state of Montana, and then a little bit northern Wyoming. But mm -hmm. I also contract out with a lot of other organizations that kind of do what I do in different realms. So mm -hmm. yeah. You, you've been in Europe as well, huh? I have, yeah. I was on, um, I still am on. We're actually starting our second round now of this project funded by Microsoft and HP called Learning Studios, which are a lot like maker spaces. And yep. the first round, they they kind of gifted, I think about 60 to 70 sites, school sites around the world. And so we had five sites in Northern Europe, five sites in Southern Europe, and five sites in Australia and New Zealand, and then a bunch in the US and Canada. So there were three of us trainers, so we kind of divided and conquered, and I got the five Southern Europe sites. So I went and did, I had three sites in England, one in Italy, and one in Spain. And then uh, one of my colleagues, at the same time I was there, she was in your neck of the woods. She was in Sweden, Nor or wait, yeah, Sweden, Norway, Finland. Actually, maybe not Sweden. Norway, Finland, Germany. I can't remember if they're Sweden or not, Whatever. but somewhere in my, around in there. Neck of, yeah, in, in your neck of the woods. woods. Anyway, <laughs> somewhere up. I know she was in Norway and Finland. So, yeah. And, she, and Germany. So. Way cool. Yeah. So that was great. That was in September. So I was there for two weeks in September yeah. of 2016. So. How, how was, by the way, the, um, was it a huge step uh, getting started on your own, your own business? No? Um, I mean, kind of. I got really lucky is what I always tell people. I was working as a technology integration specialist for, we have what we call regional education service centers. And I was working for the one that covers Southwest Montana. So there's five regions in Montana, and I was working for the region four that covers Southwest Montana as a technology integration specialist. So I was off, I was working in a consultant role with the schools in our region, and schools outside of our region started requesting my my training because I was actually the only tech integration specialist for any of the regions in Montana. That was actually okay. a staff member, and. Um, so then I just kind of thought to myself, I was like, you know, I could kind of do this on my own. So mm -hmm. I branched off and started doing that. A lot of work around Montana. And then I got hooked up with a really awesome company called Educational Collaborators. And that they, they're the ones that got me into the Microsoft training. So I went and did four days of Microsoft training to become a Microsoft trainer, education trainer. Um, and they, and then kind of just have got linked up with, like I do a lot of work with Hapara as well. And Hapara offers their product for, used to be just G Suite. Now they also offer it for Office 365. So I've been helping them a lot with both sides of that. And yeah, just kind of one of those things, like once you get your, kind of get your foot in the door and everything <laughs> just starts to expand and expand and expand. <laughs> yeah. 
So. All right, all right. Um, one thing, or actually, uh, the reason that I, I uh, wanted to talk to you from the very beginning was that uh, I was looking for some kind of uh, comparison material, in this case, between um, uh, O365 and, um, and G Suite. And there was hardly any that I could find, at least, on the net. And then I, I found your comparison chart. And uh, it's pretty darn good. <laughs> um, of course, I mean, comparisons like that are always really, yeah. really hard. Uh, you, you get like the surface part of it, obviously. But I mean, yeah. even that, th 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 it was really hard finding anything. Yeah, it's hard. And it's hard to compare. I always, that's like the it number is. one question I get, it seems like, is, you know, which one do you prefer? In fact, I, yeah, yeah, I tweeted yeah. out that we were going to do this Google Hangout on air, and like the first reply I got was, which one do you prefer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> G Suite yeah, or Office 65? That's sure. what everybody wants to know. And my response is always, it completely depends on a lot of different factors. It depends mm -hmm. on um, your goals, number one, as an organization or an institution. And my second answer is always, why not use both? Because they both have their little niches that, you know, Google has this, but Microsoft doesn't. Mm -hmm. Microsoft has this, but Google doesn't. So I have a lot of schools, not a lot, but a few schools that are starting to move that way where they mm -hmm. do single sign-in and they are able to access both sets of tools. Because I always use the example of Google Classroom versus OneNote Class Notebook, which are like the two, you know, big uh, products from either company. And English teachers love Google Classroom, like love, love, love it. Math teachers love OneNote Class Notebook. So, <laughs> you know, at the same, in, a, in one school, depending upon what grade you're teaching, what content you're teaching, mm -hmm. there's tools in both of the suites that, um, you know, it's kind of like I always think of it as a toolbox. Like I have this, actually I have one, hold on, where is it at? So I literally have, I use this as my, as my, uh, in trainings as kind of an analogy. This is Lindy's teacher toolbox. Hey, and that's idea, pretty neat. For, for yeah. anyone listening, I mean, that is a real toolbox here. Yeah, and I use it and then inside of it is all of my tools that I use for instruction. So I've got physical things like markers and highlighters and post-it notes. And then I've got digital things. Get out of there. There's my post-it notes. And I've got digital things like Sway is my Microsoft yep. tool and Google Apps for Education, which I need to update to say G Suite for Education. <laughs> so the idea here is I use this as an analogy. As a teacher, you know, you want to pick your your learning objectives or your learning outcomes, and then you need to choose what instructional tools are going to help you meet those learning objectives and you know, as, as in a school, that could be why. Like, why ignore if you're only if you're a G Suite school? Why ignore Sway, for example, because it's a Microsoft product. You know, that might yeah. be the best tool for the job. So yeah, anyway, it's um, my toolbox. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, it, it makes in a way it makes great sense what you're saying that that why not, uh, you know, like use both uh, both services, but uh, uh, in in my case on our home turf here in 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 very northern Sweden. So uh, so the decision has been made to um, go uh, the Microsoft way uh, and um, using both. Apparently, uh, apparently it, it was considered too complicated in needing too much resources. Quite simply. Uh, Keeping both systems running—that's uh, that's the way I've, I've understood. And um, like me, I'm I'm a, a G Suite um, super admin. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing that like five years almost now on my own, basically in my school only, since nothing was happening here. So, and and the reason that I I fired up uh, Google Apps as it was called back then was that I, I knew basically how it worked already. I did not know the, the Microsoft offerings that well at all, or hardly at all. So it was just, you know, I, I didn't do any, any 
major comparison work there. I just I just noticed that hey, I, I've got to get get this thing rolling, and um, I, I ran with, with whatever I whatever was closest to me, <laughs> quite simply, in a way. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and I hear that a lot, and I totally understand that perspective of you know it's a lot with both, but kind of how I look at it is, you know, start with one, and then. If you feel like you need to add in, if you're once you kind of get used to that and get ready, and choose the one that you want to use for your email, like your main collaboration, your email, your cloud storage. So do you want to use Google Drive or OneDrive? Do you want to use Gmail or Outlook? Um, hmm. And kind of like choose that as your your main kind of productivity suite, and then. So let's say that you choose G Suite for education for that. So you're using Gmail and Google Drive, and you're using all the other Google tools. Then if you want, if you have a teacher that wants to use, say, OneNote Class Notebook, then you can easily do single sign-in so your teachers don't, your teachers and your students don't have to have new emails, new passwords, it's single sign-in, and they can easily still use OneNote Class Notebook, but you're not using Outlook or OneDrive. You know, does that make mm -hmm. sense? So again, mm -hmm. thinking along the lines of like, your, your tools, your instructional tools that you're just, and then you're able to get to, you can use Sway, you can use OneNote Class Notebook, and mm -hmm. um, I don't know, that's kind of how I look at it, so it's not, you know, having two emails and two, two cloud storage file options, but more from the instructional side of being able to pick the tools from, from either end, so. Yeah, I guess that would be ideal if you could, if you could play it that way, and this single sign-on thing is, I, I bet it's a way way to go everywhere sooner or later I'd, I'd guess so yeah. you can pick and choose whatever ever uh, tools you want to have in that toolbox of yours yeah and if you have a teacher that's overwhelmed and is like you know I can't look at anything else then that's okay if what they have is working for them that's what I always stress too but yeah. for those teachers that do want to use other tools or do you know a math teacher that wants to use one note class notebook you know opening up that option like you have to have office 365 education to use that um, and now a big game changer is minecraft education edition you have yeah, to right, have right. office 365 education login to even log into microsoft edition that's right minecraft that's right minecraft education edition so i see that being a little bit of a game changer too for the g suite mm -hmm. tools because you know they want to use Minecraft, so now mm -hmm. we'll create right. a single sign-in, and they sign in with the same account in Google and Minecraft. But now you can mm -hmm. use Minecraft. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Minecraft has become incredibly popular. I, I guess I, I'm, I don't know much about that at all, but uh, it seems yeah. to be huge. Yeah, I just went through two days well. of yeah. I've actually gone through three days of Minecraft trainer training. So I just got back from Seattle a couple weeks ago and. Yeah, there's huge possibilities there. So I see it becoming yeah. more and more popular. But mm -hmm. I don't see Microsoft changing that it, you have to log in with Office 365 because that's how they make it secure. You know, secure login is signing in with Office 365 account to even sure. get to that. So, sure. yeah. By the way, I think I've been rude to Kim here. Uh, what the heck, Kim? Did I just keep going and and you <laughs> didn't have to say at all? <laughs> Kim, Kim, who are you? Ex except being my my tech support, uh, you know, invaluable, really <laughs> often. So please, a couple of words about what you do. Yeah, I disabled the microphone a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> We're just having our own conversation. <laughs> now, my story is not that different from yours, Lindy. But instead of working with Hapara, I work with uh, GAT, so General Audit Tool. So I've been supporting people up in both in Canada, France, and uh, up near Chicago and that area, and Sweden and Norway. But other than that, working with G Suite, um, back all the back way back when when it's, it didn't even have a name like Google Apps, yeah. it was just Google Docs. It was just was the Google name. Docs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, as a as an educator for students and other teachers, and then, and also G Suite administrators, so that's my background. And so, if we we're talking about just just recently the Minecraft education, and I haven't found still you need a Windows 10 or a Mac OS device, and we run 
Chromebooks all over the place. So yeah. that's not happening anytime soon. So that's a problem. One... If, had they released it for, for Linux or for Android, it will be in the game because yeah. Minecraft, Minecraft Android works fine on the new, newly released Android compatible Chromebooks. Yeah. So that would have been awesome. Chrome, Chromebooks has, uh, has become a huge thing, uh, it seems, especially in the States. I, I don't know if it's if the impact has has been that huge in in global terms in sweden though re they are really Definitely. popular Definitely. really yeah we had a major event here in in sweden just a couple of weeks ago because their impact in sweden so google just put up a special event just for that so celebrating the the spread of chromebooks in sweden Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, that Minecraft training or training that I was just at, that we had that conversation. And um, I mean, they made it pretty clear that that's not the road that they're going down, that they no. it's no. probably only going to be Windows Windows and Mac. Um, and so we talked about that. And they were so they were saying, because they do a lot of Minecraft trainings across the world, that the whole the Chromebook question is really only a Chromebook question in the US. <laughs> so it's interesting that you say that, that Sweden, too, yeah. is heavy Chromebook. Yeah, it's been it's been like a it's like a landslide in in, in Sweden for sure with Chrome. Yeah, well, that's kind of what happened in the U.S. Yeah. So yeah, and I'm interested to see now with the Windows 10 S. Right. Gonna what, what does what does the S stand for, please? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I heard something which sounds kind of weird. I've heard it stands for soul. Soul. <laughs> Quite hilarious because it's supposed to it's supposed to be the opposite effect. It's supposed to be faster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, not, I, not, not not slow, but yeah. so like. <laughs> oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, hey. yeah. I, I'm not I'm not you know Microsoft bashing here or anything. Yeah. Not, not no, slow. No. It can be lightning fast, but yeah. but it's got soul. I don't so. know where I got that from, but yeah. actually I've heard it from. Uh, some kind of a, a uh, half valid know. source, Here's, I believe. <laughs> let's, let's look at, let's do a Google search. What does the S? Let's see I, don't, I don't think they've ever said, like, officially what it stands for. No, I haven't heard that, at least. No, no. I don't see. I think, it, I think they spelt it wrong. It should be Kofefe. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm chasing. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Oh man, not, let's let's not go down that. Yeah, button. let's not go there. Anytime I work in Canada, every now and again, and every time I go there now, they're like, "So you're responsible?" I'm like, "No, not me." <laughs> okay, oh jeez. So I bet this is what the S stands for: streamlined for security and superior performance. Yeah. yeah wow. Well. There, yeah, there, there we go. There are several several suggestions here, right? Yeah. Streamlined they, security superior. <laughs> yeah. They couldn't put SS and triple yeah, S is too much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, by the way, when when talking about these uh, these cloud services from the tech giants, uh, and thinking back a bit, when did this all start? I mean it's 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 really accelerated like crazy. Um, somehow the uh, those those big guys have been uh, putting lots of, of money, lots of investments in in education in a way that uh, perhaps was unheard of earlier. And uh, we've been discussing Microsoft and Google here. But hey, isn't isn't there this this huge tech company that used to be really big in education? What what is Apple doing in in uh, in the cloud in education? Well, not a whole lot. They had they released that Apple Classroom, or I can't remember. Yeah, what they, it, got that, class, they got a classroom. They got a classroom. Classroom as well. Everyone's yeah, got like, a classroom. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, that I haven't seen any adoption of. Uh, that was last year. I I don't think. Their classroom is anything like uh, the classrooms no. from from Microsoft and Google. It's a completely different different service. Yeah, it was more meant to be um, device management in a in the classroom, so, yeah. like where the teacher could manage twenty iPads 
difference in a classroom yeah. a little right. bit easier. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of, that's what it's designed to be. But yeah, I haven't seen it really being used um, just because I think most schools are using more things like Rocky or G Suite or um, uh, Lightspeed has its own kind of MDM solution. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. How did how did all this get started, and when did it get started? That education all of a sudden was like crazy hot. Yeah, gosh, I don't know. I um, I feel like what Google was kind of a leader there because they released Google Apps for Education, mm -hmm. and you know the administrative features. And when, when 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 was that actually? When, when, like, did, when did they well, launch uh, like Google? Like saying, like at first it was just Google Docs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. And, yeah, I think around I want to say 2009, 2010 is when they really released it, where it was there was administrative power over uh -huh. it. Um, does that hey, sound by the way, Jonas, Jonas is with us. Oh, hey. Jonas, say, say something. Perhaps I can hear you. Hello. Oh, oh, oh it's always you. good to hear. It makes, it makes me so warm inside that I can hear your voice. You can't believe it. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you if you got the message. There are two buttons uh, too many on my mixer. Yeah. That's yeah, what anyway, I, got. I must say I'm, I'm behind in listening to what you talked about, and you were all like super into discussing platforms. I'm like, wow, what's happening? <laughs> the, the, the energy thing, was flowing. <laughs> the interesting thing to me, uh, with actually all of you guys, but I think especially uh, especially Lindy and you, Jonas, is the fact that you got certifications both from the the Microsoft world and the um, and the Google world, and that is not extremely common, I think. No. Wonder usually, why? Yeah. It takes usually lots of work. People, I guess. Well, yeah, it is a lot, but I mean, usually, I feel like people choose one camp or the other. And I've been like, when I started as a technology integration specialist, my motto was really use the tool that's right for the job, for the teacher, for the classroom, for the school. And I don't care what brand it has on it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people that literally will not even look at Microsoft because they're so into Google. And I'm like, you're missing out. There's some really good tools here. Mm -hmm. um, and now Microsoft is really kind of coming in and swooping a chunk of, I've had a few schools just in the past few months that are moving from Google to Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you're missing out here. Like there's, mm -hmm. There's a revolution happening, and Microsoft is coming up with a lot of new updates, like their new Microsoft Teams now. It's replacing Microsoft Classroom, and that. Uh, wait, a sec, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Is Microsoft Classroom being replaced by Teams? Yes. So this is the new wow. news. Like I want to say a month ago, ish. Well, maybe a month and a half ago. Um, okay. When they re when they announced Windows 10 S, they also announced that. So Microsoft Classroom has been in beta for a year now. Like it's going away as of July 30th, I believe, and being, well, it will still be there. You'll still be able to access any classes that you have created in it, but you can't create any new classes at that time. And all of the classes are now going to be in Microsoft Teams, which Microsoft originally developed to be, if you ever use Slack, it's a little bit like Slack, where you kind like, of have these like, conversation uh, channels. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, what, what, yeah. What, how would you describe Slack? Uh, is, isn't Slack mostly like for, for the enterprise? I, it was developed that way, yeah. And so that's what Microsoft's compete was to Slack, mm. was Microsoft Teams. And they offered it as part of Office 365, where mm. it's, you know, you can have, you have channels or you have conversations. So it kind of combines instant messaging with email, with like you know kind of like combines all of that is the best way that i can explain mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. and it it started off only only enterprise well i mean you could get it in office 365 education but that was kind of the focus was more of the organization focus and now they've actually so now they're kind of moving microsoft classroom into teams and they're adding a bunch of integrations like kahoot is integrated in microsoft teams now and um, what are some others, Jonas? Do you remember? You, I haven't. Yeah, I, I, I just been on a training session as a Surface expert, and uh, we got demoed the new function. And uh, what I haven't tried yet is the assignments that are linked to the uh, OneNote class notebook. 
so they actually get organized in teams now yeah well, that's great and but i was also going to say when you talked about how these platforms move between each other uh, i really like uh, office mix and office mix has a full integration of you can create your account and everything through a google account so you don't have to be an office 365 school to use office mix yeah. So what, what, does, what, does, what does Office Mix do? Please, guys, give me a break. Yeah, yeah. it's again one of those tools that uh, you do presentations from PowerPoint, and then you have an add-on, which means that you can add quiz function, you can do screencast function, and you can do annotation. So the whole idea is to make it like a tool for uh, explaining and what they call like, like storytelling. And I mean, that's probably what Lindy maybe mentioned. The uh, one we are waiting for is called Story Remix. That and I've heard of, see. actually. That I've yeah. heard of a bit. Sounds pretty fun. Yeah. We haven't been but into the, that at all. Uh, would you outline a bit what it's all about, Jonas? Story uh, Remix? That, yeah, yeah, that's again, I would say it's a spin off out of Office Mix because uh, instead of just integrating PowerPoint, you can now integrate 3D models. And I think even it's easier to put in the movie clips into it. Like, so it's more like you can actually create like a storybook with different, and I think this is uh, be building on multimodality, like using different tools of explaining yourself. I did see their, their uh, demonstration of that. And if it's anything like that, uh, for real, when it comes out, then whoa, <laughs> I sure want to try it out. That's a yeah. fact. And um, some updates are going to be coming to Office Mix really soon. They've kind of hinted, <laughs> they can't say for sure, but they've hinted to the idea. So, Office Mix right now, you can only create on Windows. You can watch on any device, but you can only create on Windows. Um, yep. It sounds just, like that's okay. what I just verified. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can only create on Windows. You can watch on any device. Um, but they've actually announced that they're they're trying to move it to a more device agnostic platform, and they're actually trying to, from what I understand, make it into their because they got rid of Microsoft, uh, their Movie Maker. Was that what it's called, Movie Maker? Um, so it's gone now, and they're trying to like make Office Mix their video editing tool, from what I understand. So. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, by the way, Jonas, you have those really cool headphones now. That's, that's <laughs> now, new stuff, new gear. Now, now it's uh, different each time I move uh, place. <laughs> so it's not uh, like, yeah, this is just the uh, Bluetooth headphones. Okay. Of course, I got. I, by the way, Jonas, um, would you please say a couple of things about what you do as well, since. Uh, I couldn't fix it to get you on board from the very beginning due to my various tech troubles here. Uh, you are into some really interesting stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, the simple way of explaining it is that in Sweden, we are uh, having a lot of change where we say to get technology integrated in education, we need to train the teachers. And uh, our National Board of Education has developed modules for training. And I would easily explain my role is that companies have as a uh, corporate social responsibility initiative said that we also want to support teachers to develop technology skills. So I'm officially sponsored by a project that's run by HP and Intel. But what I do is uh, going out to schools and working with the teachers on how to integrate technology. And that's why also for me being both on the side of Microsoft or the Google, the schools have different platforms. So that's not the focus. The focus is on the learning and what type of things we do with the computers. Hmm. Yep. And talking about computers, we are almost it's almost equal talking about the internet these days, or is it? Is, is computers, does, does computers equal internet? Well, uh, hard, hard to say, uh, but it, 
in in this case it's more like i would say devices mm. if you have a device in the classroom if it's a, a uh, it can do different things. If it's a touch, it's a different thing. If you can write on it, it uh, you see different affordances. Yeah. And internet is obviously part of this. Otherwise, there is not as much affordances. Mm, sure. Um, I was still thinking of, of the fact that you guys have so many, all of you folks have so many certifications of different kinds i have none um not that that i'd be unin uninterested in all this but i just haven't had a chance no way uh, no no time to to try to do something like that uh, but it would be interesting to hear from from you uh Jonas and lindy a little bit about how does this part like work in these two camps i don't know if you have have any apple certifications uh but like uh, microsoft and google are there similarities and all the, i've just all those names make my head spin basically yeah yeah well um google they're, they're pretty i mean they're pretty similar across the board google operates off they have kind of three main certification levels educator so you can become a google certified educator there's a level one and a level two then there's Google Certified Trainer. Well, I should say Google for Education Certified Trainer. And then Google for Education Certified Innovator, which used to be their certified teacher. Wow, um, I they've... told you it make, makes my, <laughs> they make my head <laughs> <laughs> It's really pretty easy, though. So the first, the first level is your Google for Education Certified Educator, hmm. level one, level two. To get those, you take a test. And um, I think the first one is like an hour, an hour and a half, and the, the second level is three hour test. Um, and it's kind of crazy. They actually, you have to turn your webcam on, and it like takes random pictures of you to make sure you're the actual the one taking the test. Um, <laughs> but it's very, it's yeah, it's kind of weird. But the, it's very unlike a test. There's a small section that's kind of like multiple choicey, um, but then the most of it, they actually put you into a live Google or G Suite domain. Um, and you would do tasks. So it'll say, you know, go to Google Sites and create a site and add a page. And so really, if you know Google, you have no problem passing it because it literally just has you do things. It'll say, go to Drive, create a Google Doc, change the name, put it in this folder. Um, so that's how you get the level one and the level two educator. And then the trainer level, um, they've changed it a little bit since I did it, but you they open up the application process four times a year, and you comp you do a video, um, kind of introducing yourself and teaching a topic. Um, and what else do you do for trainer? Let me think. Um, you oh, you have to do a case study. Yeah, I was going to say it's uh, in the training portal. You also have to show uh, your skills in the different devices. In yeah, oh yeah, that's right. And. And I wanted to say also to Nilo, uh, you know it's the Google Professional Development Week this week, which means you have 50% off your level one, 75% oh. off your level two. <laughs> there you and go. If, if you don't succeed, you get 30 days later a trial again. So <laughs> yeah. why don't you just go for it now? And if you don't succeed, you can just read a bit and brush up your skills and then go for it again. You should. Mm. I jumped right to level two. I skipped to level one and jumped to level two, which I was glad I did, um, and just got went straight to my level two. But if, like I said, if you know Google and you use it, you will have you won't have any problems passing the level two, level one or level two mm. test. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So the and, trainer. And the, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say on the Microsoft side, uh, since I'm heavily involved there, because a lot of people uh, find it hard to see how the process works here in Sweden. But the thing that is special is that you take the test through something called the Search Report Center. And I know it's a Pearson VU that are in different countries, but we have this Search Report Center. And uh, I've got prices uh, for about 450 Swedish crowns, but if it's something going to change your school, uh, the ones who do it, they normally give a free license for the one who want to do a pilot, 
And once you know if it's good for your school, then you go ahead with it. So all of those contacts are getting sorted here in Sweden and the test itself, I've done it this weekend, uh, the new one, just to brush up on the skills. And it is very similar. You get seven case scenarios, like a history class with 30 students. These are the devices. How would you do this exercise? And then it's multiple choice options. All right. So, so and uh, that is the hundred minute long uh -huh. test. And it's you guys, oh, sorry, online you online test or what? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, you have to go to the test center. Okay, I, I missed that. In center. Sweden, in, yeah. in different parts of the world, you can do it online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys have the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program certifications in Sweden. Uh, no, what we have here is that we only start with uh, being, uh, yeah, like you say, the Microsoft Innovative Educator, but the certification is only for Microsoft Certified Educator. Okay. It sounds, yeah. For everyone, it sounds very, yeah. yeah. The, the next part that we don't exam, but then it is as an Innovative Educator, you can then become a trainer. And I've seen on the community, you are Master Trainer level. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to so education.microsoft.com, that's where. So what Jonas has been talking about is like the the Microsoft Certified Educator and the MOS and the Microsoft Office Specialist. Those are the ones we have to go to a testing center and take the test. Uh, but then there's actually a whole nother. So that's like one set of Microsoft certifications. There's a whole nother that are focused specifically on education, and that's the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program. And so if you go to education.microsoft.com, that's where you can start earning those badges. So if you you can actually, if you go to Microsoft Education Training for like a day, I believe, you become a Microsoft Innovative Educator, or you can actually go to that site and t um, do online courses. So you can take these little modules and um, you earn points. And I think once you get to a thousand points, you get your Microsoft Innovative exactly. Educator badge. Um, and then if you want to become a trainer, you can either go and do a two-day trainer kind of boot camp course, or you can do it online. Then once you get all of that training done, you have to train 100 people. That's when you get your Microsoft Innovative Educator trainer badge. Then when you hit, I think, 500 people, that's when you become a master trainer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, and then they also have their expert um, level so you can become an MIE expert that the applications are actually open for that right now you have to apply and it's self nominating you either create a sway or an office mix explaining why you should become a MIE expert and I think you fill out an application um, and then it's very selective it's kind of like Google's innovator program they select from that and then you kind of get immersed into a, like a year-long professional learning experience. Um, everybody that I've heard from that's done the MIE expert says it's like one of the best PD experiences they've ever had. Um, and the, the applications are open till I think July 15th. Um, yeah, it, like it's again different in different yeah. countries, but uh, I'm definitely know ours is open now also. And uh, the of training uh, on this uh, new releases, and we also get some pro bono, what you call it, like to test new uh, devices and uh, applications. Like yeah. I've been training, or, or we get like promo codes within the program because they want us as innovative educators to use their tools. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, uh, I think <laughs> I, I need to do some digging into right. this. Uh, and, and and of course, to make it more complicated, you can of course be a, a Minecraft certified educator. No yes. kidding. <laughs> yeah, and that's a whole, so that's 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 a separate so that thing. Actually, yeah. yeah, you go to education.minecraft. I'll add this to the chat right now. Education.minecraft.net. That's where you can become a Minecraft certified trainer or a Minecraft certified trainer. That's the badge that I just got. Um, and so you'll get bad. It's kind of weird. Like you'll get badges in the Minecraft site, but then you can also get them in the the, the Microsoft Educator community. Um, so yeah, lots of options. And then if you go in the Microsoft Educator community, can I share my screen here? 
Yeah, I think you, you can. Somewhere um, to the left. Here, I'll show you real quick. Let me get in here. Again, um, Man, yeah. I get this feeling that being just the teacher isn't much. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, so if you go in here and you make a profile, so you go to education.microsoft.com. Can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And then you make a profile. Um, once you go to your profile and you start earning badges, they start showing up here. So, like, here's a few of my badges. And then if I go under achievements, it shows more, maybe, come on. Not gonna let me go. There we go. Um, so here's some more badges that I have. So here's my Minecraft certified trainer. I have Skype ready, community member. So you can, and then if you go and click on this earned, you can see all, so these are all of the badges that you can earn. So you, <laughs> wow. Yeah, so you can, a sway, a sway badge, and a one note badge, and a surface badge, and here's the Minecraft certified educator badge. Um, so anyway, there's tons and tons of stuff that you and, can do. Here. And I would also say what's really interesting, once you are a trainer, you also get the access to give out badges to people in the community training session i will give them a promotion code so they will get points in this education community uh, when they have attended to any of my online or physical trainings yeah and there's actually a I'll, let me share my screen one more time here if you're on that site and you're wondering what your points get you if you click on this badges points and certificates over on the left this explains what the badges are. And then I believe if you click on them, no, let me see. I'm trying to figure out, there's a spot where it tells you how many points equal what. That's not it though. Um, oh, wait, 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 don't go back. I think it's here, right here, click here. There we go. So it's kind of hidden. So you actually have to click right here. And then that tells you like how many points equal what. So. Um, and how many points you get for doing different things on the community. Hmm. So, uh, Guys, I'm going to uh, go out of the call now because I have some dinner waiting for oh, me. Oh, wow. <laughs> but but <laughs> I'm, for you. Uh, def the, as, as you say, Lindy has all of these facts and things. And if it's people in Sweden who wants to know how it works here and where to go, uh, on the Microsoft side, I'm have all the contacts and I know most of the things in Google. So just transfer that and I'll see if I can help out on this side. Excellent. We'll be and in the, touch for sure. Yeah. Enjoy the continue of the call. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. 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 Here's um, a quick then, Lindy, since you were in the screen here, uh, will you have the... Did I drop my screen share? Yeah, I did. I'll do it again. Do it again. There we go. There we go. If you mm -hmm. pull up my screen there, Nilo. Uh, let's see if I uh, not, not mute. present to everyone, huh? <laughs> yeah, not go. mute. <laughs> not, I, no, I, didn't, I, I did that once. <laughs> I muted him. No, I kicked, I kicked you out of the Hangout, huh? Yeah. So just, I just uh, joined the site, the education site, and it told me there are three, three upcoming events. Just now, two two of them tomorrow. Awesome. So that was just a quickie. Yeah. Man, you got like a thousand tabs there. Yeah. Oh yeah, but this is <laughs> this is see this one instead. Kill it. I do this one. That's my window. Uh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look like mine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, Good luck. Like I said, so I have the Hangout down here to the left. I'm checking the stream over here to the bottom right. And then I have the window for all the links that we've seen and also checking the event to make sure some of the links get in there. If, if you're seriously being effective with all that stuff, then congrats, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Ah, oh, yep. Um, 
interesting stuff like crazy. Uh, before we we um, you can we call this my, quits, I'm, I'm feeling it's it's been a long day for sure, and I mean amazing that <laughs> that we got this started after all my stupid troubles here. Uh, I, I told Kim earlier that those those two buttons on the mixer, I think I should need some really powerful glue or something to, you know, be sure that I'll, I'll never touch them again. Uh, they'd be like permanently set in whatever position it's right now, because now things work. <laughs> but uh, um, I was thinking about the, um, the Google Trainer Part. I think we switched over to the Microsoft side uh, just before you got into that, uh, Lindy. What about the trainer thing? Uh, that is kind of a tough one. You got to got to put quite a bit of effort into that, huh? Yeah, there's quite a bit of work to become a trainer. Like I said, they change it a little bit. Um, you have to take some tests. Well, here, let's just see. Let me find the website real quick. Nilo, before she, Lindy goes on, remove my screen share because you oh, forced me to Thank you. Uh, stop presenting. OK. Yeah. Do not kick him out of the Hangout. No? All right. <laughs> we are good, I think. Yeah, we want to see, see Lindy when she's talking. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so so it's, a, it's similar to what I did, a little tiny bit different. You do you take the trainer course. They actually have a course that's built for trainers now. Well, here let me share my screen. You can see this real quick. I'm on. I'm just on the um, Google for Education Training Center under Certified Trainer, and then here's the application steps for becoming a trainer. So the trainer course, um, you do the trainer skills assessment. So that's like a some tests that you take. You have to be both a uh, educator level one and level two now. Mm -hmm. You film a trainer video. So that's what I was saying. Um, mine was a little, probably a little different. What are they seeing now? Oh no, it's about the same. So you have three minute video where the first you kind of introduce yourself and then you actually spend about two minutes of the video teaching them about one feature of Google. So I did mine on how to filter Google searches Google image searches by um, like copyright options. Okay. Uh, but it's really interesting because you have to figure out how to fit all of that. You have to like introduce yourself and teach something in under three minutes. It can't be one <laughs> second over three minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Three, yeah. three minutes is three minutes. It's not 259 or 301. Exactly. Yeah, no, three minutes. Like, yeah, it could be a little bit under, but it cannot be over three minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, so you do all of that, and then you submit it. They open it four times a year each quarter. Um, and then once the quarter is over, they review your application and let you know if you are in. And then the innovator program is a little bit like um, the Microsoft expert program where you itself apply. You actually apply and you have to tell them what type of innovation program or innovation project that you want to do. So you have to actually present your idea for an innovation project. And then it's very selective. I think they only take 50 per group. And you actually go and do two days of, um, two days of, I want to say like, you know, learning at a Google office across the world so sometimes they do it in mountain view california i think the next one i want to say or they just did one in the uk there's one coming up in dc they'll have them i've seen one in austin texas before last year they did it in boulder colorado right after the ISTE conference because ISTE was in denver um so yeah so you do you have to be a educator level two you develop a vision presentation of your innovator project you film a vision video about your innovator project, and then you may or may not get selected. Interesting. So anyway, that's Google's Google's process. And, and I guess I guess you need to keep it up, like freshen your keep it fresh your knowledge, or or how does it work if you got say. Uh, a certain level, uh, a certain certification. How, how, how long does it is it valid or? Yeah, as far as I know, the Google Educator badge is you don't have to renew the level one and the level two. I have mm. never had to renew my level two, and I've had it for a couple years. Um, but okay. the trainer badge you have to renew every year. 
So they right. always they send us a, a email the end of December usually telling us what we need to do. This year we had to take a little test showing that we knew about the updates about Google. Um, and then we have to do at least 12 trainings a year. So right. 12 Google focused trainings and you report those in the Google training center. So you report them throughout the year and you have to have at least 12. Um, and let's see, I think that those are the big things. There's, oh, you have to submit at least like one or two resources to our Google certified trainer, um, community. We have a Google, Google certified trainer community. So you have to submit at least a resource or two to that every year. Um, I think that's about it to renew. Right. And then I don't know about innovator. I know you have to do your innovation project over the year that you're in the program. Um, but I, I haven't done the innovator. I haven't applied. So I'm not sure about renew if you have to do anything special to renew that. I guess it's something, something similar on the, on the Microsoft side that they, they, they want to keep you on your toes. Yeah, so Microsoft, in order to keep being, I think you can, you just keep your MIE badge. If you become an MIE trainer, we have to make sure that every year you train at least 100 people. To maintain your master trainer status, you have to train at least 500 people. Um, and then MIE expert, I don't, I don't think you have to renew, not that I know of. I've never applied to that one either, so I'm not, hmm. I'm not yeah. sure. Really, really interesting stuff here, and uh, I'm really g glad that we managed to pull this off in the end. Uh, I almost lost hope there for a while, <laughs> um, but uh, shoot, now I think I've got those buttons on my mixer pinned down, and, and next time they'll be glued solid, so <laughs> it should work better. And I really hope that, that uh, I'll get you on sometime later on as well, uh, Lindy. Um, these things, uh, we, we do this stuff like on, on different subjects and, and sometimes ramble quite a bit and uh, it's kind of part of the fun. Uh, but if you have the chance, I'd, I'd love to have you in the show. Yeah, in the future as well. great. Yeah, yeah, it's good talking to like-minded people anytime. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Especially folks that, that have a wide a wide range of of uh, knowledge and uh you know sometimes it can get even a, like a little bit religious you know these these different camps and it's it's fun with with uh, you guys who are you know living both yeah. worlds all worlds yeah <laughs> i should mention too a colleague of mine let me look it up um we haven't talked much about apple but a mm -hmm, colleague right. of mine just sent me this was new information to me just sent me the other day that Apple has a website, appleteacher.apple.com. I haven't even Apple gone there yet. Appleteacher.apple.com, okay. Yeah, here, I'll put it in the chat, appleteacher.apple.com. Um, and apparently, this is like their micro-credential space, kind of like the Microsoft Educator community. Log in, you know, you have to make an account. Um, you have to sign up, make an account. From what I understand, I, I haven't even looked at it. My, a colleague of mine sent it to me the other day. She was asking if I had seen it, and I was like, no, this is news to me. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and I know um, in order to become an Apple Distinguished Educator, which I don't have any Apple certifications, you have to be in a school, be teaching in a school that was chosen to be part of the Apple Distinguished Educator program. So it's kind uh -huh. of more of a school-wide thing than an individual okay. thing, okay. from what I understand. Um, I have a couple colleagues that have done it that could talk mm -hmm. a lot more about it than I could. <laughs> yeah, well, it yeah. would be interesting to hear more about that later on as well, for sure. Yeah. And especially what is going in, in, the, uh, in the Apple ecosystem within education. Uh, I have a hard time believing that, that Apple would be leaving this field yeah. to the other guys. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they just play a little different role because they don't have, they're more hardware um, versus, they are. yeah. They are. So versus the cloud items like Office 365 and G Suite that Google and Microsoft have. So yeah, they're definitely still there. Um, they're kind of, it, what, from what I've read, they've, they've kind of gotten, at least in the U.S., 
swept over a, a, their market share in education by Google and now Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So, but Apparently. they're still there. There's still a lot of iPads in schools. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, for sure. <laughs> Lots for of sure. iPads. Yeah, yeah that's sure. their point. I mean, the Apple is, is hardware first, and then yeah. you have apps. By when yep. Office, you buy software companies. Hmm. But Apple is a hardware company. Guys, it's been a blast. Like you and us, I have a faint hope that there might be some dinner leftovers for me as yeah. well if I if <laughs> I get going time. soon. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Lynn, the ton of thanks that you uh, took time for this. You're Lots welcome. of fun. Yeah, anytime. And uh, have a great summer, everyone. I'll be. Uh, ejecting here hey on friday uh, to my summer pastures so kind of busy still a couple of days here i'd say but i hope i i make it <laughs> have a good one everyone all right bye bye bye, -bye. bye guys <laughs>